and I was knocked out instantly. And the doctor always told my parents, like, no contact sports, no wow. contact sports. She can't do it. Like, it's too risky. Okay. Um, I had another concussion when I was 16 because I did bad things. I, was gonna, I yeah. got into a schoolyard scrap. Oh, no way. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. And I got a really bad concussion then. And then a couple in jiu-jitsu. Wow. So I know I'm very susceptible, susceptible. because okay. I've had it such at a sudden, uh, at such a young age. But I also feel like my body knows how to adapt. It's kind of like catch 2020. Like okay. my body kind of knows how to adapt and I bounce back relatively well. Okay. So, and have you had a lot of have you had a lot of like bad sort of uh, lingering concussion side effects? Like, have you had moments where you've had to stay in a like a dark room and all that kind of stuff or post concussion syndrome? My first year at Purple Ball, I was competing that whole year concussed. Wow. I was very delusional, and I just went from tournament to tournament, being like, "It's fine. It's fine. It's just a little headache." You're just nauseous. But I was completely not there. Wow. Um, and then after that year at Worlds, I lost first match. I got hit really bad in training. And I had to take off from, I think, July all the way to Atlanta Open, which was February. So I took July to February off. And then I came back in one world. So, you know, That's like incredible. I feel like just taking that time and, like, really taking care of myself. And I was, like, stuck in my apartment not doing much i was just lifting a lot of weights okay um but so you competed for a whole year though as purple belt with a concussion yeah. basically what, what like... or like some lingering concussion side effects yeah. i was just never a hundred percent that first year okay um but because i did so well i made it to the finals the year before it was like some sort of like weird pressure i put on myself to like okay. maintain the momentum so i just was didn't tell anyone, but I knew something was wrong. And I felt I I knew what a concussion was and the symptoms. I just didn't want to admit to myself until that last hit after Worlds. And I kind of was like, okay, like it's time to like really take time off. And I got to see a specialist and he was like, absolutely not. Like he, Josh, the owner of Toronto GJ was in my appointment and they made it very clear that I am not to train. Wow. And I was like banned from the gym for a bit. I mean, yeah. it, it speaks to, I mean, that really speaks to your drive and determination, right? Because I think people see like it's the hard training and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think a lot of people see the the willingness to, to really sacrifice your, your body and your yeah. long-term health to win. And I, I do admire that. I just it, like, it's kind of a scary thing. Like, so when you were going through that year at Purple Belt, it was, a, was it mostly nausea and headaches or were there other things like did you did it affect your training? Did it affect your ability to recover uh, in any capacity? It that year is such a foggy year for yeah, me. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I just remember it. I when people ask what a concussion feels like, I tell them it's like an end of like being high, like okay. you know, like the drowsy state where you're like <laughs> yeah. kind of coming back and you're just like, wait, a... like what? Am I still high? Am I not? Like it's like a weird fog. Okay. So yeah. that whole year. Is kind of a blur. I just remember knowing that I shouldn't be competing yeah. and training, wow. but I was still like, just man, like just I managed. I wow. just got it together for every tournament. I performed poorly, all like all year. Worlds, yeah, I lost first match, and then I think when I finally got hit when Worlds was done, it was kind of like, oh, there's nothing coming up. Like you can finally like, chill out for a bit. Right. So. I mean, that's a pretty, I mean, but again, I think it, it speaks to that, you know, I, I feel like all these people that are high achievers have that kind of like crazy urge where like a normal person would say, you know, okay, let's pump the brakes here. But it, in a lot of ways, you feel like you're obligated to do it because you're trying to achieve such high highs, you know, do you have...